discuss about the speed control of dc motors and um, three point starter what is the need of speed control and what is the main advantage of speed control in dc motors compared to other motors how the classification of uh, how the what are the different methods are available in speed control of dc motors then that method description diagram advantage disadvantage after then what is the necessity of starter what are the different starters are available for dc motors and now mainly what is the construction and operation of three point starter generally what is the need of speed control so generally uh, day to day life the industries are industries are developing more and more they will need to control the speed of a motors for their user requirements for their requirements some per, some industry may run with more than rated speed or some industry may run with less than rated speed so, so for that situations to control the speed of a dc motor that is the necessity how can you control the speed of a dc motor means so by using formula eb is equal to eb is equal to pi zn by 60 into p by a for that n n n is proportional to eb by pi so eb means back emf v minus i r a by pi so uh, now i am adding extra resistance in the armature circuit n proportional to eb uh, v minus i a r a plus r by pi so right side of that equation three parameters are variable voltage across the armature circuit extra resistance across the armature circuit flux in the field so voltage and armature uh, resistance both are uh, related to the armature circuit flux related to the field that's why speed control of dc motors are broadly classified into two types first one is flux control method second one is armature control method in flux control method by changing the flux we can change the speed by reducing the flux we can increasing the speed more than the rated speed more than the rated speed please don't take the diagrams so me valla nen chaala ibbandalu padutunnanu ippudike network sariga la kallaartunnanu meeru and even meer touch cheyyuddandi meer touch cheyadam valla naaku mottham ibbandu avutundandi ne mali starting nunchi power avalsi vastundi అందుకే మీరు కామ్ వినండి మీరు అసలు వాటిని మీరు పట్టించుకోవద్దండి స్లైడ్స్ మీరు ఎవరు టచ్ చేయొద్దు ప్లీజ్ సో ఫ్లక్స్ కంట్రోల్ మెథడ్ టు రెడ్యూస్ ది ఫ్లక్స్ యూ కెన్ ఇంక్రీస్ ద స్పీడ్ మోర్ దెన్ ది రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ సో ఫర్ దట్ యూ కెనాట్ గెటింగ్ లెస్ దెన్ రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ ఓన్లీ హయర్ దెన్ ది రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ ఓన్లీ పాసిబుల్ ఇన్ ఫ్లక్స్ కంట్రోల్ మెథడ్ వేర్ యాజ్ ఇన్ ఆర్మిచర్ కంట్రోల్ మెథడ్ by increasing the resistance the back emf is reduced increasing the resistance means armature current reduces armature current reduce means back emf reduces ba when back emf reduces automatically speed reduces that's why so by increasing the resistance drop reduces such that back emf reduces such that speed reduces so by using armature control method we can achieve only below rated speed not above rated speed right so those are the two control methods speed control method very very important flux control method armature control method diagram advantage just one days right flux control method we are adding rheostat in the field in series with the field whereas in armature control method we are adding a rheostat in series with the armature name itself armature control armature connect chestam rheostat ni adhe flux control field connect chestam rheostat ni ఆ విధంగా డయాగ్రామ్ గుర్తుపెట్టుకొని సో ఈజీగా మనం రాసి వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ స్పీడ్ కంట్రోల్ ఆఫ్ డిసి మోటార్ దెన్ స్టార్టర్ త్రీ వాట్ ఈస్ ద నెస్సిటీ ఆఫ్ స్టార్టర్ దెర్ ఈజ్ నో స్టార్టర్ మోటార్ ఈజ్ రన్నింగ్ యాజ్ యూజువల్ దెర్ ఈజ్ నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ బట్ ఈవెన్ ఎనీ ఎనీ టైమ్ అన్ ఎక్సెసివ్ కరెంట్ అన్ ఎక్స్ట్రా కరెంట్ ఈజ్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ త్రూ ద స్టార్టింగ్ ఆఫ్ ది మోటార్ దట్ మే స్పాయిల్ ద వైండింగ్ ఆఫ్ ది మోటార్ దట్స్ వై టు రెడ్యూస్ దట్ ఎట్ ఎక్సెసివ్ కరెంట్ extra current at the starting of the motor we are utilizing a starter starter is nothing but extra resistance 
add it in series with the armature studs 1 2 3 4 5 like that so right extra resistance added to the armature circuit in series that may reduce the starting current or excessive current coming from the line that may safely working the motor three point starter there is no three point starter motor is starting there is no doubt but our motor is running with safe safely means we have to utilize three point starter generally two point starter three point starter four point starter two point starter used for series motor three point starter is shunt motor four point starter is shunt and compound motors in four point starter we are utilizing extra neutral wire also right so working construction working no voltage coil overload coil the two are the protecting devices is there any problem occur overload occur so that may disconnect the supply from the motor motor is safely safe right already last class so same now next class next topic that is the testing of dc motors so before going to the testing of dc motors first of all losses losses in the dc machine power flow diagram efficiency of a dc machine then testing of dc motors right first losses losses in a dc machine so generally the losses various losses occurred in the dc machine right so copper losses iron losses mechanical losses copper losses are again classified into armature copper losses copper loss means current copper loss are occurred because of current only i square r that's why armature current copper losses shunt field copper losses series field copper loss field is field winding where field winding is there on that on that way copper loss are occurred iron losses are constant losses that is hysteresis and eddy current losses mechanical losses are also constant that is friction and windage losses right generally mainly losses is nothing but in transformer whatever it machine two losses are always present copper and iron losses copper means variable losses iron loss means constant losses so these two losses are always occur for every machine but coming to the rotating machines extra loss is there mechanical losses whereas in transformer there is no mechanical losses only copper loss iron loss right in copper loss primary winding copper loss second winding copper loss not armature shunt field series field so every machine it may be static machine or rotating machine copper and iron loss are must must they, they must present suppose it is a rotating machine extra losses that is mechanical losses there there is a suppose it is a static machine that means transformer there is no mechanical losses constant losses are iron losses that does not depending upon the machine variable such as current voltage why you are calling iron losses are constant losses means these losses does not depending upon the current or voltage current me da voltage me da aadhar padu iron losses ane and that's why can called as iron losses are constant losses whereas in copper losses copper loss depending upon the current current is changing as load changes load change ay kodi current change avutuntadi that's why so copper loss also changing that's why you can called as copper losses or variable losses but iron loss are not depending upon the voltage uh, current but iron losses are considered as a constant losses as they depend upon, depending upon the frequency so frequency me aadhar padthi iron losses anedi which are constant parameters in most of the machines the friction and windage losses are also supposed to be the part of the constant losses so the mechanical losses are also constant losses why because friction and windage losses are appearing in parts that is bearings shaft so 
that that is a constant devices that's why uh, friction and windage losses are also called uh, called as constant losses the variable losses mainly considered mainly considered as copper losses which are proportional to the square of the current through the conductors right that's why as current varies as load varies current varies such that the copper loss are also varies right so generally friction losses windage losses are there friction losses means friction where where friction occurs generally bearings right bearing friction brush friction i also know ledu just me telisukunte sali total losses total losses is nothing but copper losses plus iron losses plus mechanical losses right losses are very important in mission as the losses directly influence the economical aspects and the rating of the mission why if temperature rises suppose if temperature rise that may decide the losses hence rating of the mission is also decided thus losses will play very important role for designing the mission so first to go for the copper losses and then we discuss about the discuss about the so losses are mainly they asking sometime 10 marks explain the losses of a dc machine or explain losses of a transformer that's why i am telling clearly copper losses iron losses are constant losses or core losses then mechanical losses mainly losses in dc machine means copper losses iron losses mechanical losses copper losses are also called as variable losses constant losses or iron losses are also called as constant losses or core losses right first go for the copper loss copper losses are the losses taking place due to the current flowing through the winding mainly copper loss are where copper loss occurred means winding winding armature winding or field winding whatever it may be copper losses are occurred in the winding itself there are basically two windings in the dc machine right two windings are there right what are that windings armature winding and field winding copper losses means copper losses are occurring in the winding itself generally in dc machine two windings are there what are there armature winding and field winding the copper losses are proportional to the square of the current flowing through the these windings therefore various copper losses are given by first armature copper loss ia square ra ia square armature means ia current square into ra so these armature copper loss are 30% of the total full load losses total total losses major losses are armature copper loss that is the 30% next shunt field copper losses ish square rsh shunt field current means ish shunt field resistance means rsh therefore shunt field copper losses are ish square rsh generally shunt field current losses are almost constant because shunt field current is almost constant next series field copper losses isc series field current is isc series field resistance is rsc therefore series field copper losses are isc square rsc so mainly out of these three copper losses armature copper loss and series field copper loss are variable losses generally in a compound dc machine both shunt field and series field copper loss are present in addition to the copper losses there exists a extra brush brush contact drop but this drop is usually included in the armature copper loss extra drop also there series field shunt field is there series field is there armature is there extra brush is also there but that brush drop are already included in the 
armature copper law. That's why you, we don't uh, write extra. Armature copper loss in the sense, armature copper loss and also breast losses. Right? These are the cop copper loss are mainly occurred in the winding. Winding mean winding mean DC machine, two windings are there. Armature winding, field winding. Armature winding is nothing but armature copper loss, that is I square RA. Shunt field copper loss, ISH square RSH. Series field copper loss, ISC square RSE. Right? How can you reduce these copper losses means? By reducing the resistance. RA automatically the losses also reduces. Next, core losses. Core losses or iron losses or constant losses or magnetic losses. Core means core means magnet field. Sorry. Core means core, iron core or magnet. The losses are occurring in the magnet itself. So that's why you can call it as core losses or iron losses or constant losses or magnetic losses. These losses are also called as magnetic losses. These losses include stress loss and eddy current losses. Two types. Iron losses are mainly two types. As armature core is made up of iron, right? Iron or silicon steel, and it rotates in a magnetic field. A small current gets induced in the core itself. Due to this current, due to these small currents, a eddy current loss and a stress loss are occurred in the armature core. So that means iron losses are occurred in the iron core. Copper loss are occurred in the winding, but iron losses are occurred in the core, armature core. So two types. Eddy current losses and stress losses, right? So first eddy current losses. Eddy current loss exists due to the eddy currents. Eddy currents means small leakage currents, escaping currents. When armature core rotates, it cuts the magnetic field and EMF is induced. That induced EMF may set up the small induced currents, which may cause the power loss. So that eddy current loss, empirical formula, Empirical formula for eddy current loss is K BM square, F square, T square, V watts, where K is the constant, eddy uh, current constant. BM is the maximum flux density, right? And uh, F is the frequency. T is thickness of laminations. V, volume of the core, right? So look at the formula. Eddy current loss are K constant, BM flux density also constant. So F is not constant. T is also not constant. So that means so thickness, thickness and volume also constant. That's why eddy current loss are directly proportional to the F square. Eddy current loss is equal to B F square. So square of the frequency with other person. And the case of pen, Naka copper losses matron current with the depend on tie. Iron losses are current with the depend kavu, but frequency with the depend on tie. So, you can iron loss only two types eddy current loss are frequency square with square of the depending upon the square of the frequency. So, how can you reduce the eddy current losses by reducing the thickness of laminations? By reducing thickness of lamination, we can easily reduce the eddy current losses. La by using laminations, you can reduce the eddy current losses. Lamination means we are giving a, a varnish coating, iron uh, varnish coating. That is nothing but lamination. Next, stress losses. So that, that means, so we know the all, uh, already we studied in BH Karu. Lights can be at less, sir. Huh? Lights can be at less, sir. Sir, Mali Mitsus Kondi. Slides make it all canipus to Nagada. 
నెట్ ప్రాబ్లం ఏ ఉంటది మార్క్ కూడా రావట్లే సార్ సార్ అది 11th స్లైడ్ లో ఉంది సార్ మీరు చెప్పారు అంటే మీరు ప్రస్తుతం చెప్పేది 7th స్లైడ్ లో ఉంది కానీ మాకు డిస్‌ప్లే 11th స్లైడ్ చూపిస్తుంది సార్ ఓన్ సార్ వాళ్ళు సరిగా నెట్ క్వాలిటీ సరిగా ఇవ్వటం లేదు అదే విధంగా మీ దగ్గర కూడా కొంత ప్రాబ్లం ఉంటది ఎవరో దీన్ని కలిపేటారు ఇప్పుడు లెవెన్ అని ఎవరో కలిపెట్టారు దాన్ని నాకు క్లియర్ కనిపిస్తుంది నువ్వు అన్నట్టు నేనేమో సెవెంత్ స్లైడ్ పెట్టుకోవాలను మీ మీకేమో లెవెన్త్ స్లైడ్ కనిపిస్తుంది అవును సార్ నాకు లెవెన్త్ స్లైడ్ ఆ ఇదిగో టు ప్రెజెంటర్ అది పోయింది పోయింది నేను మళ్ళీ దాన్ని అప్లోడ్ చేయాలి కేవలం మీ ప్రాబ్లం ఏనమ్మా మీరు చేయడం వల్ల ఈ విధంగా నేను టైం వేస్ట్ అవుతుంది చెప్తే మీరెవరు కలబెట్టద్దమ్మా జస్ట్ ఏనండి కనిపిస్తుందమ్మా అమరావతి ప్లీజ్ మీరు అందరూ ఎవరు దాన్ని మీ స్లైడ్స్ టచ్ చేయొద్దు ప్లీజ్ మీరు టచ్ చేస్తే ఇక్కడ నాకు ప్రాబ్లం వస్తుంది సో రైట్ సారీ ఫర్ ది డిస్టర్బెన్స్ మళ్ళీ ఎవరు కలిపెట్టేశారు ప్లీజ్ మీరు ఎవరు టచ్ చేయొద్దండి సారీ ఫర్ ది డిస్టర్బెన్స్ హిస్టరీ స్లాస్ సో హిస్టరీ స్లాస్ ఆర్ ఆల్రెడీ స్టడీడ్ ఇన్ ద ఫిజిక్స్ బిహెచ్ కరు the flux density also changing that means increasing 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 after some time they will be saturated and will be taking the reverse process that means mainly stress stress is nothing but reverse of magnetization of the magnetic curve amma first touch the slides don't touch the slides please stress loss is nothing but reverse law of magnetization of the magnetic curve or area of stress curve gives the stress losses the empirical formula for stress loss is eta bm 1.6 fv where eta is the strain main stress law coefficient v is the volume of the core f is the frequency so m is the constant v is the constant right stress loss is directly proportional to frequency or af whereas eddy current losses proportion frequency square some per so how can you reduce the stress loss means so by using silicon steel silicon steel material can reduce the stress loss by using the lamination you can reduce the stress loss total iron losses are reduced by using silicon steel lamination by using silicon steel material we can reduce silicon steel the value is 1.6 generally you are putting x bm power x for silicon steel material the value of x is 1.6 for another copper the value is 2 like that so for silicon steel material we can reduce the stress losses by using laminations we can reduce the eddy current losses total silicon steel laminations by using silicon steel laminations we can reduce the iron losses so how the stress loss occurred means uh, reverse law of magnetization of the magnetic curve of armature core so how can you reduce by using silicon steel eddy current losses 
so there is small escaping eddy currents that may produce the losses in the iron core the those those currents are eddy currents because of that eddy currents losses are occurred that loss is called eddy current loss how can you reduce that one by using laminations you can reduce the eddy current losses the stress loss are directly proportional to the frequency whereas eddy current so directly proportional to the frequency square so almost constant both the losses are constant then mechanical losses these losses consists of friction and windage losses right mechanical losses is nothing but friction and windage losses some power is required to overcome the mechanical friction and windage resistance at the shaft only this loss is nothing but friction and windage losses the mechanical losses are also constant for dc mission the magnetic and mechanical losses together called as stray losses so that are not discussed now so these friction losses can be reduced by using bearings ball bearings roller bearings windage losses can be reduced by providing a closed type closed type vessels right copper losses are reduced by using good conductors conductors means resistance is low when resistance is low copper losses are reduced stress loss can be reduced by using silicon steel to the armature core eddy current loss are reduced by providing lamination to the armature core right look at the power flow diagram of a dc machine power flow and the energy transformation diagram at various stages which takes place in dc machine and are represented in diagrammatically for generator and motor both are suppose taking the generator input for generator input is mechanical output is electrical whereas in motor input is electrical output is mechanical so first we are giving the mechanical input so right that may given to the motor so in between uh, input and motor armature that means shaft is there core iron core is there that's why iron and friction loss in shaft friction and windage loss occur, occur. in iron core iron loss occur. coming coming to the armature and output copper loss armature copper loss are occurred so then output is nothing but electrical output that is vi watts mechanical input is nothing but that is armature power developed in the armature eg into ia so efficiency is nothing but output power by input power coming to the motor reverse process first we are giving the electrical input that is vi that may given to the that may given to the armature of a dc machine that means copper losses are there and this will be converted into mechanical power that means iron core and shaft that's why iron losses and friction losses and output is mechanical power this is the power flow diagram we don't require this one but you can understanding purpose where the losses occur, occur where copper losses occur where iron losses occur copper losses occur winding itself that is armature winding field winding whereas iron losses core armature core or magnetic core friction and windage loss are occur in the shaft itself so now next efficiency of a dc machine efficiency of a dc machine generally efficiency means performance performance of dc machine can be determined with the help of this factor efficiency how we have to def define the efficiency it is the ratio of output power to input power percentage efficiency is nothing but output power by input power multiplied by 100 generally the efficiency of a rotating machine is the ratio of output to input and this is a direct method to obtain the efficiency where the input and output are directly measured right but this involves errors in the measurement input and output both similarly in large machines the loading can be arranged practically 
hence practical losses are measured first and then efficiency is measured efficiency of a generator or motor can be defined as first of all for generator we know the output look at the look at the figure figure for generator we know the output right so that's why for motor we know the input so for generator we know the output that's why generator efficiency is equal to output by output plus losses this is the this is the generator efficiency for generator we know the output value that's why uh, generator efficiency is equal to output power by output power plus losses losses means output power by input power plus copper losses plus iron losses this one is total total losses that is copper losses iron losses plus input right whereas in motor we know the input suppose motor suppose we know the motor we know the input input minus losses by input input minus losses by input so here power output means for generator output vi generator input vi plus losses input losses vi plus losses means copper losses plus iron losses i square r a plus pc or wc so next one determine the condition for maximum efficiency Very important we know the efficiency formula output by input output by output plus losses output means v multiplied by i v multiplied by i plus losses means i copper losses i a square r a plus pc or wc constant losses whatever to get the maximum value means to get the maximum value means differentiate with respect some factor so to get the maximum efficiency with respect to current so d efficiency by di so this is uv method u by v method u by v method v into du minus u into dv by v square by solving this one equating zero by solving this one i a square r a is equal to pc what is i a square r a copper losses what is pc iron losses Now what is the condition for maximum efficiency most important for two marks write the condition for maximum efficiency i a square r a is equal to pc otherwise copper losses is equal to iron losses otherwise variable losses is equal to constant losses that is the condition for maximum efficiency iron losses is equal to copper losses otherwise i a square r a is equal to pc otherwise constant uh, variable loss is equal to constant loss is the condition for maximum efficiency now current at maximum efficiency means we know the condition i a square r a is equal to pc therefore i a is equal to pc by r a then i a square is equal to pc by r a i a is equal to square root of pc by r a this is the load current at maximum efficiency next so like that we have to determine the efficiency uh, condition for maximum efficiency losses iron loss copper losses iron losses and mechanical losses right now go for the testing of a dc machine generally we are having so many tests are there for determining the performance of dc machine but in our syllabus only one test is there that is the swinburne test generally direct direct test indirect test direct test is nothing but brake test indirect test is nothing but swinburne test so by using direct method you can determine the efficiency directly with the help of losses so that means in brake test you determine the output you determine the input can directly determine the efficiency whereas in indirect test you have to first determine the losses first constant losses then copper losses after then you have to determine the input output and then find the efficiency right for direct test or brake test means we don't determine the losses we just determine the input just determine the output output by input is nothing but efficiency that is the brake test indirect test means swim but swim one test indirect test or spin one test in this test 
first we determine the losses first constant losses then copper losses after then you have to determine the output input then find out the efficiency that is the difference between these two tests so both tests are in our laboratory in our lab the break test is there and swin burn test is there but in theoretical syllabus only swin burn test is only for the disturbance power power problem just wait for one minute So this is the break test. So in break test method, so look at the figure. Generally, there is, this is not in our syllabus, but we, we give you a brief description by you because in laboratory this experiment is there. So direct method and motor um, motor is known as break test method. So this is the armature and give you a mechanical brakes. So S1, S2, these are the springs. So 
a voltmeter is connected across the supply then a ammeter is connected in series with the supply and a rheostat put in minimum position that is connected to the field circuit z z z like that and um, another rheostat is also connected in the armature itself right so what is the procedure means so first put the rheostat in minimum position and we are giving the supply with the help of three point starter here we are we, we not shown the three point starter generally here three point starter is there so with the help of three point starter start the motor slowly and check the motor speed with the help of tachometer and then suppose if the motor is rotating with 1200 speed 1200 rpm by varying the rheostat we can increase the speed of a dc motor up to rated speed that is 1500 after reaching the 1500 just leave the rheostat and note down the readings of voltmeter ammeter speed and also spring balance values so now by varying the now now varying the armature rheostat um, um rheostat slowly step by step that may that may vary the field current such that uh, sorry armature current such that we have to determine the different speeds for current 1 ampere what is the speed for 2 amperes what is the speed what is the voltage what is the current like that for every step we have to note down the voltage value speed of the motor and also current value and these two spring values right so coming to the tabular column so look at the voltage current s1 s2 that is spring values now difference s1 minus s2 torque we have to calculate the torque s1 minus s2 r plus t by 2 into 9.81 newton meter what, what is this r plus t by 2 radius of the drum this mechanical drum that is the constant value and t by 2 thickness by 2 9 into 9 why because s1 s2 are in kgs now convert newton meter that is into 9.81 output is nothing but 2 pi nt by 60 so already here torque is there that's why output is nothing but 2 pi nt by 60 input is nothing but these two multiplication v and i line voltage and line current is nothing but input output with the help of torque we have to calculate it. input with the help of these two columns we have to calculate it. then efficiency is nothing but output power by input power so remember in brake test we cannot calculate the losses directly we just calculate the output we just calculate the input then output by input is nothing but efficiency this is the uh, brake test briefly so this test is not in theoretical but practically we have we are having this test what is the main drawback disadvantage is nothing but accuracy you cannot find out efficiency accurately why because losses are included right practically losses are not zero na practically losses are occurred but we cannot we, we, we cannot calculate losses here that's why so it is not a accuracy accurate efficiency and difficult to provide full load and large capacity so we cannot uh, so this test is applicable only small small rating of the dc motors but not large motors so this is very important they given 10 marks theoretical theoretically um, in syllabus syllabus in, in in our syllabus winburn test is there this diagram is as it is laboratory diagram you can write laboratory diagram itself you can write laboratory uh, tabular diagram you can write laboratory calculations so very very important they asking 10 marks so many times explain this finborn test or indirect test of a dc machine so this is indirect method of testing of dc motors in which flux remains practically constant that is specially this test is applicable to shunt and compound motors only this test is not applicable to series motors swinburn so test is applicable to only shunt and compound where flux is constant without actual loading the motor losses and hence efficiency is different can be found out you cannot applying uh, 
మెకానికల్ లోడ్ వేర్ యాజ్ బ్రేక్ టెస్ట్ బ్రేక్ టెస్ట్ లాగా ఇక్కడ మనం మెకానికల్ లోడ్ అప్లై చేయటం లేదు కానీ వి హ్యావ్ టు డిటర్మైన్ ఫస్ట్ లాసెస్ దెన్ డిటర్మైన్ ది ఎఫిషియన్సీ దట్ ఈస్ ద బ్యూటీ ఆఫ్ స్విన్ బర్న్ టెస్ట్ ద మోట్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ద మోటర్ ఈస్ రన్నింగ్ ఎట్ ఆన్ నో లోడ్ కండిషన్ ఎట్ ఎట్ రేట్ స్పీడ్ లుక్ ఎట్ ది కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ కనెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ డయాగ్రామ్ యాజ్ యూజువల్ డిసి సప్లై టూ ట్వంటీ వోల్ట్స్ డిపిఎస్టి స్విచ్ ఫ్యూజ్ ద వోల్ట్ మీటర్ ఆల్వేస్ కనెక్ట్ అక్రాస్ ద సప్లై దెన్ అమ్ మీటర్ ఇస్ కనెక్ట్ ఇన్ సిరీస్ విత్ ద త్రీ పాయింట్ స్టార్టర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఎల్ జెడ్ ఏ ఎల్ ఎఫ్ ఏ ఇన్ ప్రాక్టికల్ ఇన్ అవర్ ల్యాబరేటరీ సో ల్యాబరేటరీ డయాగ్రామ్స్ ఎల్ ఎఫ్ ఏ ఎల్ లైన్ ఎఫ్ ఫీల్డ్ ఏ ఆర్మేచర్ జెడ్ ఆల్సో యూ కెన్ కన్సిడర్ యాజ్ ఫీల్డ్ సో ఆర్మేచర్ అమ్మేటర్ ఇస్ కనెక్ట్ టు ది లైన్ ఆఫ్ ది త్రీ పాయింట్ స్టార్టర్ అండ్ ఏ రియో స్టార్ట్ ఈస్ కనెక్టెడ్ ఇన్ టు ది ఫీల్డ్ దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ పుట్ ఇన్ మినిమం పొజిషన్ అండ్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ రియో స్టార్ట్ ఫిక్స్డ్ పాయింట్ ఎక్స్ట్రా అమ్మేటర్ ఈస్ కనెక్టెడ్ దట్ అమ్మేటర్ ఈస్ కనెక్ట్ టు ది ఫీల్డ్ అండ్ త్రీ పాయింట్ స్టార్టర్ ఆర్మేచర్ ఈస్ కనెక్ట్ టు ది ఆర్మేచర్ ఆఫ్ ది మోటర్ రైట్ సో నో ఎట్ ద స్టార్టింగ్ ఎట్ ద స్టార్టింగ్ ఆర్మేచర్ ఈస్ పుట్ ఇన్ మినిమం పొజిషన్ ద ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ త్రీ పాయింట్ స్టార్టర్ హౌ టు స్టార్ట్ ద మోటర్ దెన్ మోటర్ ఈజ్ రన్నింగ్ విత్ నార్మల్ స్పీడ్ దట్ ఈస్ లెస్ దెన్ రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ దట్ ఈస్ ట్వెల్వ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఆర్ థర్టీన్ హండ్రెడ్ బై వేరియింగ్ ది రియో స్టార్ట్ పుట్ ద మోటర్ రేట్ రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ బై వేరియింగ్ ద రియో స్టార్ట్ మోటర్ ఈజ్ రన్నింగ్ విత్ రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ ఆర్ నాట్ ప్లీజ్ వి హ్యావ్ టు చెక్ ద విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ టాకోమీటర్ ఆఫ్టర్ అట్టైనింగ్ ది రేటెడ్ స్పీడ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ డిసి మోటార్ so we have to just note down the voltage armature current sorry line current and field current values so look at the figure look at the tables terminal voltage no load current i not field current if this is the field current so right so after note down in the all three values uh, just switch off the supply put the rheostat minimum position and switch off the supply with the help of three point starter that's enough very simple experiment just start the motor with the help of three point starter motor is running with rated speed or not first check with the help of tachometer it is not running with rated speed by varying the rheo start put the motor at rated speed then note down the all readings three readings volt volt no load voltage no load current no load field current then bring back the rio start minimum position then switch off the supply so now calculate the that is the experiment just just 5 minutes experiment then we have to calculate first constant losses with the help of these three readings no load armature current i a not now constant losses we are using formula v i not minus i a square r a v i not v means this one i not means this one minus i a not so this one we have to calculate here armature current r a that, that, that is the constant value after calculating the constant losses just we have to calculate the copper losses for that by using this um, by using this table so load different loads we cannot put directly load as uh, brake test బ్రేక్ టెస్ట్ లాగా మనం మెకానికల్ లోడ్ మనం వేయటం లేదు అజ్యూమ్ చేసుకుంటున్నాం వన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ బై ఫోర్త్ లోడ్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ బై హాఫ్ లోడ్ దిస్ ఈస్ త్రీ బై ఫోర్త్ లోడ్ సార్ దట్ ఈస్ సెవెంటీ ఫైవ్ పర్సెంట్ లోడ్ ఫుల్ లోడ్ ఎక్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు వన్ బై ఫోర్ ఎక్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు వన్ బై టూ ఎక్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు త్రీ బై ఫోర్ లైక్ దట్ వి హ్యావ్ టు క్యాలిక్యులేట్ ఫస్ట్ లోడ్ లోడ్ కరెంట్ దెన్ ఆర్మేచర్ కరెంట్ దెన్ కాపర్ లాసెస్ దెన్ టోటల్ లాసెస్ సో కాపర్ లాస్ ఈజ్ అయితే బట్ ఐఏ స్క్వైర్ ఆర్ఏ total loss means already constant load calculated before now copper losses plus iron losses that is another total losses input power v multiplied by i output power so out input power minus losses is nothing but output power then efficiency so that is nothing but first we have to calculate the constant losses after then we have to calculate the iron losses um, uh, constant losses then calculate the copper losses then input power output power efficiency but coming to the brake test we don't calculate the losses we just calculate the output by using formula 2 pi nt by 60 by using in by using formula vi you have to calculate input output by input efficiency is coming 
that is not accurate one but coming to this finborn test first we have to calculate the constant losses then calculate the copper losses then input power then output power losses look at the formulas armature resistance already they given we don't calculate but formula is r ac is equal to 1.5 times of r dc exact formula but 1.2 is all some test books they use 1.2 also constant losses vi not these are these are all uh, tabular values no load voltage no load current no load armature current ra is already calculated constant loss is equal to vi not minus i a square ra then we have to calculate armature current ia il plus if plus is used for generator minus is used for motor right copper losses i a square ra total losses constant losses this one wc not then copper losses wcu then motor input so we know the motor input then first find out input then output so what is the advantage of this this one since constant losses are known the efficiency can be estimated at any load once ne constant losses telisthe iron a iron loss telisthe copper loss anedi nu 1 by 4th lagadi calculate cheyochu adhe vidhanga 3 by 4th load dagga calculate cheyochu ekkadaina cheyochu so that's why since constant losses are known the efficiency can be estimated at any any type of load and this method is very very convenient and economical because less power is required for testing for large motors also whereas in brake test brake test is used for only small motors but spin burn test is used for large motors that is only one no load power is to be supplied the motor is not required to be loaded only test to be carried out at the no load test these are the advantages of spin burn test what are the disadvantages it is a no load test it cannot be performed on series motor so this test is not performed on series motor where is no load at full load due to armature reaction at full load there will be some reduction of flux that may increase the iron losses why because so because due to the flux the variation of flux with iron loss will be changes so right so the, this is the swin burn test so theoretically second unit is completed principle of operation back significance of back emf torque equation uh, condition for maximum load then characteristics of dc motors um, applications of dc motors speed control of dc motors three point starter um then today topics losses different types of losses efficiency condition for maximum efficiency to find the efficiency we are utilizing two test direct test and indirect test in our syllabus the indirect test is available that is finborn test so right next class we just um solve the some problem total problems of second unit so till now i am not discuss about any problem for second unit whereas in first unit i am discussed every topic every problem but coming to this unit i am completed theoretically first then i am doing the problems in torque torque equation we are doing some problems in speed control method we are doing some problems and the last list spin burn determine the efficiency we are doing some problems and last spin burn test we are doing one problem right next class uh, just discuss about the problems of complete second unit right so thank you any doubt please ask